Thank you for joining us for this virtual film screening and musical performance of The Gingham Dog and the Calico Cat. My name is Zoe Van Ostrand, and I work for the History Center in Tompkins County. The History Center is a generation-to-generation -generation education and research space focusing on the history of Tompkins County and the Finger Lakes region. We hope you'll visit our museum and research library on the Ithaca Commons, and you can also find us online at thehistorycenter.net or on any social media platform with the handle Tompkins History. Tompkins County is located in the traditional and contemporary homelands of the Goyohono Nation, often known by the name Cayuga. The Goyohono were one of the founding members of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, the oldest living democracy on the planet. Tompkins County was also home to the native nations adopted by the Goyohono, the Saponi and the Tutelo, who fled to this region in the mid-1700s, escaping colonization by European immigrants farther south. We recognize the continuing presence of the Goyohono on this land and respect their long stewardship and history in the Finger Lakes region. We're going to start the program today by sharing a little bit of history about the Ithaca Kitty, a toy from Ithaca, New York, who became world famous and inspired the characters in The Gingham Dog and the Calico Cat. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you enjoy the program. Hello, I'm Gene Endress, volunteer at the History Center. Celia Smith, wife of an Ithaca attorney, got a patent in 1892 for a stuffed cloth toy cat. Around 1886, cloth dolls began to flourish due to the spread of home sewing machines. Smith and her sister-in-law, Charity, designed a two-piece doll for Celia's toddler, Madge. Now, inspired by their pet cat, Caesar, Celia made a three-piece cat that could stand up. Charity painted the design on cloth using a half yard of fabric. It sold for 10 cents following issue of the patent. The toy licensed to and printed by the Arnold Print Works of North Adams, Massachusetts, paid Celia one cent per yard. Celia made later designs, a set of kittens, a dog, a monkey, and a sailor. When five and ten cent stores like Woolworth's became popular, one could buy a complete stuffed toy for the same ten cents, and few took the trouble to actually make one. The Ithaca Kitty was extremely popular, and millions of toys were sold that first Christmas season. In 1895, American humorist and poet Eugene Field credited the Arnold Tabby as his inspiration for his popular poem, The Duel, which features a dog made of gingham and a cat made of calico cloth who fight in front of a Dutch clock and Chinese plate. This poem was reprinted dozens of times as a children's book, recorded as a nursery song in 1960, and in 1990 inspired a book by Bridget Clark and Chris Noel entitled The Gingham Dog and the Calico Cat, which featured a new Christmas twist on the hundred-year-old poem. This book became a narrated film and album in 1991, and we'll be watching it in just a few minutes. It's so exciting to see the many ways that this simple toy, based on a real live cat who lived in Ithaca, New York, has traveled around the world and been reinterpreted by so many different artists. Before we get to the film, local musician Paige Wynn will be sharing her rendition of the Gingham Dog and the Calico Cat song with us from the Research Library at the History Center in Tompkins County. Let's give her a warm welcome. Hi, my name is Paige Wynn, and I will be singing The Gingham Dog and the Calico Cat by Dorothy Olson. The gingham dog and the calico cat Side by side on the table sat T'was half past twelve, and what do you think? Neither one had slept a wink The old Dutch clock and the Chinese plate Appeared to know as sure as fate there was going to be a terrible spat. I wasn't there, I simply stayed what was told to me by the Chinese play. The gingham dog went bow wow wow and the calico cat replied meow. The air was littered an hour or so with bits of gingham and calico while the old Dutch clock in the chimney place up with its hands before its face for it always dreaded a family row. Now mind I'm only telling you what the old Dutch clock declares is true. The Chinese plate looked very blue and wailed, oh dear, what shall we do? But the gingham dog and the calico cat wallowed this way and tumbled that. 
employing every tooth and claw in the awfulest way you ever saw. And oh, how the gingham and calico flew. Don't fancy I exaggerate. I got my news from the Chinese play. Next morning, where the two had sat, there was no trace of dog or cat, and some folks think unto this day that burglars stole that pair away. But the truth about the cat and pup is this, they ate each other up. Now what do you really think of that? That old Dutch clock, it told me so, and that is how If you'd been standing in your backyard on a starry Christmas Eve not long ago, and if you'd been listening very carefully indeed, you might have heard Santa's sleigh bells coming, and you'd have jumped for joy. But then you'd have stopped not believing your ears. <laughs> What was that? For it was on that night, not long ago, that the calico cat and the gingham dog filled the heavens with the sounds of their fighting. And that was the Christmas Eve that the gingham dog and the calico cat fell out of Santa's sleigh and found harmony in their new home. Now, as you may have heard, the gingham dog and the calico cat were enemies from the very moment they were made. You see, they were made in anger by two elves who were acting very foolishly toward each other and who wanted to see who could make the best toy in Santa's whole workshop. cloth, they sewed cloth, and they stuffed their animals with cotton batting, and their hands moved so quickly they looked like a hundred hands to the other elves who'd gathered round to watch. And while they worked, the two elves said terrible things to each other like, I'll bet your toy will have his ears on backwards, and well, you'll probably forget to put the ears on in the first place to say nothing of the tail. When they had finished, the two elves proudly placed their toys onto the wooden workshop table to compare them. The one elf had made a white puppy with floppy furry ears and a gingham bow around his neck. The other elf had made a caramel black and white kitty with long silky whiskers and a calico bow around her neck. Then, to the astonishment of all the elves, the gingham dog and the calico cat 
opened their eyes, stood up, and leapt at each other, tumbling in a furious ball of arms and legs. <coughs> at that moment, Santa stepped into the workshop, tugging at his long white beard, and said, Toys, toys, you're breaking my heart. Elves, don't you understand what you've done? You both became so angry with one another that you forgot to make your toys out of love. The two elves stared down at their feet. You put so much bad feeling into making these toys that they came to life with anger inside them. The elves looked up at Santa and nodded sadly. It'll take a powerful love to change them now, Santa said. A powerful love indeed. And then he sighed and shook his head. And so it was that Christmas Eve. The two animals continued to fight, pushing and snapping at each other atop the very largest bag on Santa's sleigh. Then suddenly, without warning, a great wind came and blew the two bickering animals right off the sleigh and into the cold, empty night. Help, they cried. Santa, help! Santa gazed down at them lovingly. Do not be afraid, he called to them. If you will only help each other from now on, you will find your way home. Goodbye, my little friends, and good luck. And even before they had time to be afraid, they landed, thump, thump, in the middle of a snowdrift at the very center of a great big forest. Ouch! My nose is flattened, cried Calico Cat, sticking her head above the snow. Ick, my ears got crimped, whined Gingham Dog as his head popped up beside hers. They climbed out of the drift and shook themselves free of powdery snow. Then they looked slowly around at the dark, unfriendly trees and the strange, blinking eyes of the forest night creatures all around them. And then they began to cry. They cried for a long while before they realized that it was far too cold to stand apart. So they snuggled up together and felt much warmer. What are we going to do? cried Gingham Dog. Oh, I don't know. It's so cold and dark here. Unable to sit still, Gingham Dog stood up and looked about, blinking his tears away. Well, we might as well start walking, unless you're too much of a scaredy cat. But this made Calico Cat cry even harder. Oh, I'm sorry, said Gingham Dog, and he took her paws in his and helped her up. Being scared makes me talk without thinking. Me too, said Calico Cat. Together, they set out along a little pathway into the unknown darkness. Gingham Dog sighed. Christmas Eve is supposed to be the happiest night of our lives when Santa puts us inside a warm, cozy home under the tree so the children will find us and love us. But here we are all alone in the middle of nowhere and... <gasps> Gracious! What's that? She pointed off through the trees. Far in the distance, there was a clearing, and in this clearing, they could see a small building. A lamp shone through a window, brightening the snow. It must be some kind of a workshop, cried Gingham Dog. They could hardly believe their eyes. They jumped up and down and danced in each other's furry little arms. Then they began running toward it, but they couldn't go very fast, for the snow was deep. They didn't know if they would make it to the lighted window still so far away. But they had to. They simply had to.
Now, although they didn't know it, what they were struggling toward was not a workshop but a cottage, a snug and welcoming cottage. And inside it was a mother, a father, a girl named Jessica, her little brother Owen, and their grandmother. The whole family was gathered around the dinner table, and Jessica and Owen were so excited they could scarcely keep their seats. Grandma, asked Jessica, when do you think Santa will come? Will we be awake? Owen asked. Oh, children, you know perfectly well that St. Nicholas only comes when everyone is asleep. Even old women like me don't know just when. Well, I'm going to stay up. I'm going to catch him, cried Owen, banging his fork on the dinner table. Mother and father and grandma laughed, but Jessica didn't think he was so funny. Oh, no, you won't. You can't catch Santa. Nobody can. He's a miracle. I can if I want. I can, too. You're only a little boy, isn't he, Mama? Just a little boy. Now, Jessica said, Mother, there's no need to quarrel. You two fight like cats and dogs, said Father. And on Christmas Eve... Later, after dinner, Jessica stood at the window, thinking about her Christmas wish. More than anything in the world, she wished for something all her own. But not just anything. It had to be a wonderful thing that was hers alone. Mother and father always made her share everything with her brother. Sometimes, when she was playing outside, Jessica would lift up a great armful of snow and hug it, pretending it was this special something all her own. But she knew perfectly well that if she tried to take it inside, the wind would blow most of it away, and then once she was inside, the rest of it would only melt. Pressing her nose to the chilly glass, it seemed to Jessica that all her best dreams were like that. Not solid, not lasting. And as she looked up at the sky, she saw that clouds had covered all the stars and it was beginning to snow. Back in the wintry forest, the calico cat and the gingham dog found themselves in quite a predicament. They had arrived at the edge of a brook, not at all sure how to cross it. The light from the cottage twinkled at them up ahead, urging them onward. If we don't make it across this stream, I don't know what will happen. It's so terribly cold, and look, it's starting to snow. Remember what Santa told us, said Gingham Dog? He told us to help each other. We have to work together. Hmm, let me think. Hmm. He sat down and thumped his tail on the snow. Excuse me, Gingham. Hush now, Calico. But... How can I think if you're chattering at me? But I think I have an answer. Let's push that big tree branch off that rock. I think when it falls, it'll make a nice bridge for us. What an excellent idea, cried Gingham Dog. And together they pushed and shoved and squeaked and puffed. And at last, the giant tree branch fell into place. And the two of them crossed over just as neatly as you please, paw and paw. But the snow was even deeper on the other side of the brook. And the flakes were falling more heavily every minute. Back inside the cottage, Jessica and Owen were just being tucked into bed. There, said Father, pulling the blankets up to Owen's chin. The sooner you fall asleep, the sooner it'll be Christmas. Mother and Father and Grandma kissed the two children and then left the room. Good night. Good night. I bet I can get to sleep before you.
said Owen. Well, I'm already asleep, so there, said Jessica. No, you're not. Oh, yes, I am. I'm talking in my sleep. Owen decided not to answer his sister. Instead, he just lay there thinking about his Christmas wish. In a quiet, quiet whisper that no one else could hear except Santa, Owen asked for a pet. He would take any kind of pet, but a little kitten or a puppy, oh, that would be perfect, perfect. Something he could hold and cuddle for as long as he wanted that no one would make him let go of. Then Owen fell asleep, dreaming that his wish had come true. Suddenly, Owen awoke. He thought he'd heard a sound outside. Maybe it was Santa. Maybe he could see Santa. He slipped out from between the covers and very quietly made his way to the door. Hey, what are you doing up? Jessica said when she saw her brother standing frozen in the middle of a giant step. You can't go downstairs. It's not morning yet. I thought I heard Santa, Owen replied, and he disappeared into the dark hallway. But you can't! You'll scare him away! You'll ruin everything! And in a moment, she too was out of bed and racing after her brother down the stairs. Owen grabbed the lamp from the kitchen and went straight to the front door. Jessica was right behind him, but by the time she got there, Owen was already halfway outside. I'm gonna see Santa! As Owen was saying this, much to her surprise, Jessica thought she saw something moving at the edge of the clearing. She peered harder, trying to see through the falling snow. Over there, she said, pointing. Oh, and shine the lamp over there. Th th that must be a child, shivered the calico cat in a very weak voice, her teeth chattering. T -t Two children, said the gingham dog. It's just like Santa said. The two poor creatures looked at each other, the ice and snow clinging to their whiskers. D do you think this could be our home? asked Gingham Dog. Oh, I do. I do, said Calico Cat, hopefully. I believe they're coming for us. It was true. Owen and Jessica, wearing only their pajamas and slippers, were racing across the snow-covered yard toward the edge of the clearing. The Calico Cat and the Gingham Dog stood up and started brushing the snow off each other. But in no time, the two children were upon them. Owen swept the calico cat into his arms. And Jessica picked up the gingham dog and hugged him to her chest. He was just as soft as the snow she'd hugged before. And he wouldn't blow away or melt. Here, here was her Christmas wish, something she could keep all to herself. Everyone was so excited that they forgot all about how cold their feet were. And Owen was busy thinking, Santa heard me, Santa heard me. Now I never have to let go of my very own pet. The calico cat and the gingham dog, each squeezed in the arms of a loving child, called out to each other. I was just about to give up, Gingham Dog admitted. Me too, said Calico Cat. Listen to that, said Jessica. They're meowing and barking to each other. And you know what, said Gingham Dog. I'm so glad we'll be together from now on. Me too. They jumped down out of the children's arms and ran side by side through the snow toward the cottage. Jessica and Owen looked at each other and laughed. Then they ran to catch up. They were all safely inside when Grandma came downstairs. What have we here, she asked. But Jessica and Owen could only sit on the sofa and point in delight to the cat and the dog jumping and dashing about on the living room carpet. Grandma sat down with them and she too was amazed. Around and around in a circle the animals ran. First the cat chasing the dog, then the dog chasing the cat. They seemed to be playing tag. 
Oh, how wonderful. Owen and Jessica and Grandma laughed. And they laughed even harder when the animals began to wrestle and tumble around the room together. Watching them, Jessica saw that the two animals loved each other very much. And she knew it would be wrong to keep the dog all to herself, apart from his dear friend. And Owen thought to himself, well, I didn't get a pet. I got two of them, and so did Jessica. But before he knew it, his sister had jumped on top of him, and they too wrestled and tumbled together giggling. This time, it was the animals' turn to watch in delight. And as they stood leaning against each other, they could feel the warmth of their new home curl up around them and melt the last of the ice and snow from their whiskers. Well, said Grandma, it sure will take us a long time to fall asleep this Christmas Eve. But something tells me St. Nick won't mind. I'd say he's been here already, said Father. Jessica and Owen turned to each other and smiled. And so it was one Christmas Eve, not so very long ago, that the calico cat and the gingham dog fell from Santa's sleigh and found harmony and love in their new home. <laughs>